After my last stream, I've decided that I no longer care if anyone can see my heating pad in my videos. Listen, I'm- my back hurts. I have come to you today to confess something. I may have procrastinated a little too close to the sun. This morning, I was feeling particularly out of sorts, and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna take it a little easy. I'm gonna go- I'm gonna go to Zaxby's. I'm gonna get a salad. It's gonna be great. I'm just gonna chill for a little bit. I'm gonna remake my thumbnails. I'll be relaxed. And I realize, before I know it, that it is 3.30, and I have almost lost all of the light I need to film a video. So, yeah, that's my bad. But it's still going up even if it does get a little dark and maybe i look a little more washed out than usual that's on me now for those of you who know and for those of you who don't my name is tk i am a writer a voice actress and your resident lunatic and today we are watching episodes 9 and 10 of nirvana and fire and i gotta say i am really really struggling to pick up the more subtler cues of the 4d chess that is happening in this show because so many people are are planning things. And if I can be frank, using the English dub doesn't really help because the English dub doesn't explain anything and it doesn't have the same subtleties as the Mandarin language because English just by nature isn't a very subtle language without drastically changing the tone of your voice. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really struggling, and I want to thank everyone who is helping me piece together the missing pieces, particularly Dana, and we'll get to that in a minute. In our last episode, we found out a lot of things, as per usual in this series, but I think this episode was quite special because one of the characters who was originally used for comic relief, being Jing Ri, kinda had his world sort of torn apart, and by accident too. If he hadn't decided to to stay up just a little bit later, there is a possibility that Fei Lu could have been seriously injured and he would have never found out that his father's guards are the ones that are targeting Mei Chung Su. And he's quite attached to Mei Chung Su for a variety of reasons. But um, what I've been told on several occasions is that Jing Ri actually has a bit of a romantic crush on him. Of course, because of censorship, that's not necessarily elaborated on in the drama. However, it definitely lends more credence to the fact that he seems a bit younger than everybody else, and why he takes it so hard that Mei Chung Su doesn't really consider him an equal. And it's not that Mei Chung Su doesn't really consider him an equal, he just doesn't really need to include him on his plans. And I think that's gonna get to him after a while, because he's not been included in Mei Chung Su's plans, he's not been included in his father's plans, not even his own brother knows what's actually happening. Now, Prince Yu has a problem where, and not only has the Crown Prince lost that very valuable stream of information, he is now hopelessly embroiled in a potential scandal that involves the murder of several young women who were working as prostitutes. Officials that are tied to his name have all are all on this infamous ledger that Prince Yu now has some access to. But since Prince Yu is playing it safe, he sent the keeper of the that ledger, the, the brothel owner's son, to the magistrate. But, and not only that, but we have another little layer to this, Mei Chung Su, who already knew about the brothel in the first place, has infiltrated Bon Ro's network of spies. Not only does he have a handle on both Crown Prince and Prince Yu, he also has an in with one of Prince Yu's spies, and not only that, but Prince Jing, the prince that he is back is now going to be the judge and jury for the case that is basically going to resolve this scandal. It seems like Mei Chung Su sees this as an opportunity for him to prove himself, and I think he's right. So unlike my previous videos, I actually have two comments I want to spotlight from my Patreon specifically. And the first one is from Dana, who has been very helpful to me, especially in understanding this plot. So Dana says, Hi, the last two episodes you had the Duke Ching affair and the dead prostitute case. Duke Ching is a very influential, rich supporter of Prince Yu, but he's a criminal who's been stealing his neighbor's lands and killing people who got in his way. His criminal ways got him the attention of the Emperor, because the alliance that Mei is head of helped the family from Duke Ching. So yay, conveniently the Emperor finds out and sends Ya Dong to investigate. Prince Yu is freaking the fuck out, because this, when, if Ya Dong returns, he'll not be able to save Duke Ching and he'll lose an ally as he'll have 
have to distance himself from the crimeing lord. Jingri's father sees this as an opportunity to frame Prince Yu. Jingri's father is Shei Yu, and I call him a high tier villain in this, which is what I suspected. Shei Yu is like, okay, so if Xia Dong dies investigating Duke Qing, that's a serious thing for the emperor's official to be killed. Everyone would assume it's Prince Yu, so she must die. That plan obviously fails. And that's the thing, Xia Dong is a trusted family friend. His son has known her for years, his son's friend knows her for years, even Xie Bi knows her, and because she might be in his way, he is willing to kill her, so I definitely figure he is a high tier villain in this story. The guy who was killing prostitutes, I think he just likes to kill them for funsies and sex play, is the crown prince's powerful supporter and a minister. Through Bon Ro, Prince Yu manages to find out who was involved, and he has the son of a brothel owner confess the journal to the magistrate, so Prince Yu wouldn't be seen as a part of the plot to take down his brother. So, as of now, both Prince Yu and Crown Prince both have key powerful men who are compromised, and oh, both came to the attention of the Emperor because of Mei. Zhe Jingri's father, has been supporting the crown prince, but he sent his son to support Prince Yu as a way to get inside information to take down Prince Yu. His son, Jingri's younger brother, finds out who his father supports and is understandably pissed that he was used as a pawn. And yeah, Zhebi absolutely has a reason to be very, very upset, and I don't blame him one little bit. And thank you so much, Dana, for your comment and for your continued support on Patreon. My second comment comes in some stages, because this one is actually quite long, because it shows me some things I didn't know in this comment is from Pandora, who is also on Patreon. Pandora says, This is such a complex and well-crafted drama on every level. Just remember that all those fiendishly clever people are playing 3D chess with each other, and these are just the opening gambits. It's impossible to unravel the layers and layers of meaning when first watching. Sometimes you just need to go with the flow, which is kind of what I've been doing, to be honest. NIF is one of a kind, which I would absolutely agree with. It doesn't go for the typical wuja tropes, and there are literally no filler episodes. Heck, there aren't even any filler scenes. Everything, and I really do mean everything, has a purpose. Yeah, I'm getting that. It took me a minute, but I get it now. From the direct, from directing to the use of music, often very poignantly, the absence of music. I haven't noticed that yet, but thank you for letting me know. I guess you can tell that this is one of my all-time favorite shows. It's the kind of show that does get better with every rewatch as more details become clear. I think Huga said it best when describing NIF as precise, professional, and truthful. I'm looking forward to seeing your take on the next episodes, seeing as how you're still watching the censored version with most of the flashbacks removed. That I absolutely did not know. I did not know this was a censored version. Watch when I received this recommendation to watch this version. I was under the impression that this version was uncensored or uncensored in the way most C dramas are uncensored. I should have figured that, but you know. It is what it is. I do recommend switching to the uncut and uncensored version as the flashbacks provide vital insights and background info. There is a particularly poignant one coming up in episode nine, which would be a shame to miss. And then they go on to tell me the details of where to find this. Thank you, Pandora, so much for giving me that tidbit of information. I genuinely had no idea, so we will be watching this on Vicky, I hope. I'm about to find out whether I can or not. All right, so I'm looking now and this seems available to me. Let's see, let me, let me give let me give a little click here to you a little click. I think we're solid. So thank you so much, Pandora. Okay, wonderful. So we're gonna get started. Yeah, let's go ahead and put our headphones on and let's enjoy the drama, friends. Now, this version does have commercials and I don't really know how I'm going to deal with that. Um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And hopefully it's a very like low and shallow bridge because I have just as much patience, honestly. Sioux residence. So is this his new house? Looks like it, because there's Fei Lu, who's having the time of his life. Oh! <laughs> Even though he is exceptionally strong, he's still just a little kid! <laughs> My heart! <laughs> I love how they're all scolding him like, you shouldn't be outside, you're not very well. Oh, uh, that chronic illness feeling when you just want to have fun, but everyone's like, y'all need to get right. <laughs> At least he's taking care of himself. At least he's like somewhat content. This man cannot catch a break. He is he is physically unable to catch any kind of break. I know you better not. 
也算是一点就透的聪明。Yeah, I'm sure if that's what they want to call it. So he was able to pass it off. So he was able to pass it off. I thought he wouldn't be able to. Contrary to what he probably says, he's not wanting to punish Councilmember Wu for the sake of these young ladies that were murdered. He wants to do it to get back at his brother. Nobody will let me outside. Oh damn, it's real cold. It's like really cold. He wants to remove all their little nasty little agents too. Ooh, so they've both lost one. Possibly. I feel like he's always right. I feel like Mei Chung Su is always right. <laughs> Although I am not looking forward to the day where he messes up. Because usually in these stories, someone messes up in a fatal way and it gets a main character killed and that's gonna hurt my heart. Ooh. Oh, you think you slick. You think you slick, huh? <laughs> Ooh, being very polite and mannerly. Oh, whoo! Every time I see him, it's always like, whoo! Playing innocent, too. Yijing Wang Yeah, he's scared to death. And Mei Chung Soon knows it, too. I mean, someone has to be! I was like, oh, hmm, poor you. Hmm, ooh, that's dirty. Play cool, man. Ooh, and I know he's scared. I know this man's scared. He expected Prince Yu to protect him. Did you get the paperwork? Is there any paperwork on this? Do you intend to argue with me? I don't know, sure as hell sounds like it. Ooh, that's gutsy. Ooh, you can't really go against what your daddy's gonna what your daddy says, can you? Because the more you buck against him, the less royal acclaim you're gonna have. Let me let me whisper a little something in your ear. Bitch, get it done. Oh, is he really pitting him against the emperor right now? He's in his head now. Oh, oh, I thought he was gonna have to argue with him a little bit more, but no. Nei Chung Su's got this man wrapped around his finger. Basically, this is the equivalent of a presidential candidate using losing a very rich senator. Oh, he's gonna abandon Duke Ching. You you don't have Shingri's dad. Oh yeah, no, I don't know anything. Although it's definitely going to seem to him that he moved from the Marquise's manor so he could support him. <laughs> yeah, and Mei Shang-Chu's just like, I know, that's what I want. Yeah, and I know this guy is fumbling because he, this was not what was in the plans. Ooh, that's a move. Why wouldn't he need your support, though? Because you're gonna seem like you just want justice to be done. He's gonna make it seem like supporting Prince Xing is gonna exonerate him. If you can help him to settle the conflicts yeah, and help and uh, under the guise of helping his majesty, then yeah, he'll he'll owe you favor and he'll feel like he owes you. Even if he wasn't a supporter of Prince Jing, he still does have a point. Mm. Oh, that's an accusation. Oh, that's a very heavy accusation. Uh, Duke Jing's been taken care of. Okay, so the prince is so the crown prince is going all in on getting rid of him. It's a it's a question. It's a good question. Yeah, so garner the garner the faith and love of the emperor. Wow, he's really digging his nails in. Like he's got Prince Yu wrapped around his finger right now. I think once Prince Yu has a moment to think about it, he's gonna get a little rebellious. He's really just twisting and just twisting. So now him speaking with Prince Jing freely 
won't be suspicious. And Mei Chung Su's just like, oh, I'm sure you will. So now he has additional protection for himself and Fei Lu, because I don't think Fei Lu would have been able to take a, like, continuous onslaught of attackers, no matter how powerful he is. He, he'll eventually get tired. Wow, that went better than anyone could have predicted, to be honest. Because now, not only does Mei Chung Su have protection, it's now not going to be seen as odd for him to be talking to Prince Jing in public. Yes, sir. I don't know, go buy Toys R Us or something. <laughs> no, what? Mm. Get your ass down here. <laughs> A little mm. bit. I don't like it when you tell me what to do. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and he's still he's still trying to like oh we can't get the staff on in time we we basically he's trying to finesse. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is Jingri's dad. He's trying his best to get rid of Mei Chung Su. Imagine what kind of power you have to have just as a person to be able to go. And have that person leave without complaint. Because I know if somebody did this to me, like, in real yeah. life, I'd be like, now who the hell do you Jesus. think you are? Aww. He thinks of Ting Sheng as his friend. Now what was that? Operation Prote Protect Dad has commenced. The amount of calm Mei Chung Su has at all times. Like, what kind of shit you been through, bruh? Like, you know when someone is calm during, like, the worst circumstances, you know they've seen some shit. The sets and environments in this show are so beautiful. Oh. Oh, that's Prince... Is that Prince Jing's buddy? But who is that person to Mei Chung Su, I wonder? You're right, Pandora, that was sad. Oh. Oh, no! These two are adorable. Oh. Oh, well, Prince Jing is known for being very... Aggressive. It's not from me, it's from him. <laughs> He's like, oh, like I can't argue with the kid, so come, whatever. <laughs> the guy who plays Mei Chung Su has done a really great job of making him seem as reserved and elegant as possible. Hmm. Wow, that's like the first time Prince Jing has felt it necessary to explain himself. So I guess to an extent, he is becoming a nicer person. This place is a little bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Yeah, because now he's not impeded by either side. It doesn't matter if he cooperates or not. Like, I'll deal with it the way I wanna. And that's why Mei Chung Su likes him so much. <laughs> Aww, he talks good about Meng when he's not around. <laughs> Who that little bitch? <laughs> Who that little brat? <laughs> Come on over here. I'm a little bit worried that statement, though, implies that uh, Mei Chung Su is a little closer to Commander Meng than uh, originally assumed. Uh oh. Oh, Fei Lu, this is not. Oh. Do they know the name? Oh! Oh, crap! Ooh! I'm not sure how I feel about that. Now, I'm assuming Mei Chung Su is doing this on purpose, but still. Yeah, don't embarrass him yet, because you want him on your side. I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful, to, but you must have had to do some shit. Wow! <laughs> Beilu said, fuck you both. Beilu said, I'm that bitch. The people from the Imperial system don't hold a single candle to the people from the martial world, because they live, eat, and breathe that stuff, man. Mm. He feels a duty to the deceased. Was Mei Chung Su the guy in the... Were they friends once? Did they used to know each other? Uh, wait, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, he either very much knew the person in the flashback or he was the person in the flashback. Would you relax? Oh my god. <laughs> the emperor is just constantly trying to get people to be quiet. Like, I'm gonna need y'all to shut the hell up. I can't stand the both of you. Get the hell out. Hmm. I mean, he's right, but still, gracious. I doubt that. Yeah, 
Hmm. I'm I'm as suspect about that as the emperor is. I, 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 I have a lot of questions. Okay, so this episode was a lot of setup toward the Duke Ching case. Not just the Duke Ching case, but also the secret brothel murders. You guys have to bear with me here. I'm going to try and sum, summate, summate, summarize, that's a better word, summarize this as best I can. Prince Yu and the Crown Prince both have major officials tied up in two different cases. The Crown Prince has officials, uh, official Luo, tied up in the secret brothel murders. And then Prince Yu is tied up with Duke Ching, who was a very dedicated financial supporter. However, he has been stealing lands from people and basically just being an all around asshole. What Mei Chung Su did was convince Prince Yu to abandon Duke Ching to the judgment of Prince Jing and help Prince Jing out in any way he can. Because if he doesn't, then he basically falls out of favor with the emperor. And now that Prince Jing and Prince Yu are sort of buddy buddy, I say that very loosely, that leaves the crown prince on the outs. Now, the crown prince has the right idea. Get rid of Mei Chung Su as soon as possible. However, he's not gonna get the chance to. Of course not. Mei Chung Su has now guaranteed himself protection of Prince Yu, who is very grateful to him for giving all of that insider information. And oh, I know the crown prince will come after you and I will protect you with everything I have. Now, Prince Yu is on his side and will offer protection and now, any aggression toward Mei Chung Su is going to be seen as an open act of aggression against Prince Yu by the Crown Prince. I wouldn't even say Mei Chung Su is performing 4D chess. This man has got this entire situation on lock. Like, he knows exactly what he's doing. However, I do have a question. Who was the person in the flashback with Prince Jing earlier? Everyone has said that Mei Chung Su's face is so different now. His face is so different now. His illness has taken such a toll on him. He looks so different now. Was he the person in that flashback or was that someone very close to him? I don't know. Um, I'm out to sea on that one. Yeah, and the crown prince really wants one of his own people in the ministry. Yup, ADP is gonna be fucking up. Shensui. I don't remember who that was, if they've been introduced. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely corrupted it to an extent. So we're getting more of Prince Jing's people into major positions. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he's not involved in this, in this spat. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, that's why no one thought of it. <laughs> like, like most of Jing's, Prince Jing's friends, he, uh, he's a bit standoffish. He, he's like, okay, that's fine. We can get with somebody that doesn't know the other princes. They're getting on my nerves any damn way. <laughs> I'm not really good for all of that. Wow, he really trusts Mei Tung Su. He really owes him for freeing Ting Sheng. Oh yeah, Cha Dong does not like Prince Jing. She don't give a shit. At the bottom of a well, I don't really have to answer to you. <laughs> exactly. If what if I choose not to hang it over? Uh, you made the rules. You're gonna have to hand it over. Would you relax? Yeah, it's just kind of par for the course. Some people just need the opportunity. <laughs> Leave all the plans to me and just try to get along with everyone. It's just Fei Lu standing on top of a bunch of unconscious bodies like, Yeah, I did that! So what? A beast. That's the second time I've heard that mentioned. Fei Lu is on Dynasty Warriors mode. <laughs> cool sword, dude. I just want to look. <laughs> That's just going to make him more interested. Oh, your worst mistake, dude. Oh, now you really about to get your ass beat. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, apologize. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm- I'm fine. Ooh. <laughs> Damn. Damn, bro. You fucked up for real this time. <laughs> the 
way he looked at him like, wow, dude. That was bad. Okay. We're about to start the trial. You sure about that? Ooh. You're getting embarrassed, dude. You got something to say? You got something to say, bitch? Yeah, I'll let you know. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much the reason. I mean, he's not wrong. Have you seen Fei Lu fight? Oh, I want to make salad after this. Sorry, every time I see food in this show, I'm like, I'm so hungry. I don't know, this, I'm feeling a little crazy about this. Oh! Mm, so that's how he knew about the brothel. Oh, so he's gonna uncover something else. Yeah, I mean that. <laughs> Is that a trick question? You want the people. Are you gonna devise a plan to take that one down? Or get him on Prince Jing's side? And that's Gong Yu. I don't know who the other girl is. Is that Bon Ro? Oh! Get him! Get his ass! Get the ass! Oh, it's the dance troupe! She's a part of the dance troupe that irrevocably ties all C dramas together. <laughs> I wasn't lying! Sure. The disgust! She don't like him. Oh, dang. Ooh. Manipulative. Like you said, nothing on this show is on accident. Is he really gonna fight him to the death in the middle of the brothel? Is he actually there? You know, for her entrance being all demure and innocent looking, she's really, really terrifying. Yeah, they just spoiled that. This is a great scene. She's scary. Oh, no. That's some head trauma. Yep, that was a very thick face. That was a lot. Whoops. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Ooh. Can't nobody see that? Can't nobody see that? Like, somebody would have seen it, right? <laughs> somebody else is in trouble. His son killed someone in the middle of a brothel. So he's just gonna keep mounting pressure upon pressure on Prince Yu. Yeah, but he killed a very important person over a personal grudge, too. Although, if Gong Yu hadn't hit the back of his knee, he wouldn't have died. Because, you know, no head trauma. But Prince Yu is about to abandon this man, just like he abandoned Duke Ching. I feel like that's not true. Yup, that's true. But man, get up off the ground. He's about to ask Mei Chung Su how to deal with this. And Mei Chung Su is going to say, leave him, just like everybody else. No, I bet not. No, this man is tired. The capital magistrate is sick of all y'all. Ooh, that's a cold-blooded smirk. Wow, that's, that's a very frank way to put that. And don't flatter me, please. <laughs> Dang, they really didn't spare him any embarrassment. They said the man who killed somebody at a brothel, I'm gonna need you to come on out right now. I know he's feeling powerful right now. The man who committed murder at the brothel last night and ran away like a bitch, your lights are on. Oh, really? Are they planning on covering it up? Murder or a crime of self-defense? Mm, that seems very optimistic. He's taking a long time to get out. He's taking a long time to come out. He might already be dead. And he's feeling very accomplished right now. At least one of the damn crimes in this city is going well. <laughs> what for? This man is being pushed back and forth. You're only two years away from retirement. <laughs> No, he looks pretty young. Yeah, no, this man is under a lot of stress. But that means that gives Mei Chung Su the opportunity to put someone else in his position. I mean, he's not wrong. Oh, wow, they skipped over that whole thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, he ain't res he, he's not satisfied with that. Springs back. It looks like, anyway. Jing Ri's come to, re come to visit. And Eugene. Eugene, stop. Yes! He's having trouble coping. Mm. Yeah, no. I, I want to keep a low profile. Yeah, you want to be like him to an extent. Wow, the emperor has been has been receiving Prince Jing with a lot more respect lately. Damn, when he said abandon Duke Ching, he said leave him to rot. 
and they're trying to avoid the count while he's getting increasingly dissatisfied with the proceedings, I bet means he's going to go to the crown prince. To be honest, I feel a little bad for the members of the Ministry of Justice in this situation here. Even though they are being moved and getting recognition, they are still low-key being used as pawns. And they have no idea. Does this mean that the crown prince is going to lose his position? Because to the emperor, it's gonna seem like Prince Yu has calmed down. And although Prince Jing still doesn't get the rewards. RIP! I... God! I mean, that's the cost of being the unfavorite. Don't worry, I'm the middle child, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, we gonna be out. We don't like to say, we don't like him. Yeah, yeah, you did. At least you admitted it out loud. Appearing very humble. Appearing humble, but being like, I don't want your, I don't want your dirty money. Get off me. I don't care. Wow, that seems like an unnaturally generous offer. Liar. Ooh, what does Bonro know? What is this something interesting? I worry when they say something interesting. I think Eugene is trying to make Chingri feel better. Chingri's like, ah, yeah, I'm dead inside. Ooh, wow, he's tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chingri is just like, I want to die. <laughs> Oh, right. It, oh. 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 So he's the eyewitness. That's going to be interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. So not only does young Master He have a ton of witnesses to his apparent crime, the person who is the eyewitness is probably the person that has the least amount of skin in the game. This man, he's he's lazy, drunk, he spends all his time there. Of course he saw it. Of course no one's gonna question him because why would he lie? So yeah, young Master Ho is about to get fucked. Like he's about to get dead in a major way. And I feel like since he didn't die off screen like the brothel case was taken. I have a feeling that this is gonna take a very uncomfortable turn. Poor Jingri is still sad, still struggling with the fact that his entire worldview has been flipped upside down and Mei Chung Su basically said, hey, look, don't worry about it. I got you. You just don't have to worry about it. Just keep living your life and let me do me. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna let you do you, but I'm still sad. Like my father has been lying to me. My mother's probably lying to me. My brother won't talk talk to me because he thinks I'm in league with my dad and not really paying attention to the apparent scandal. Yeah, he's kind of in a weird position. And Eugen, of course, is none the wiser. And I have a feeling that they're going to play a bit more of a major part in these next few proceedings. And so is Xiaodong, because Xiaodong is probably the biggest obstacle Prince Jing has at the moment because she hates him. I mean, for obvious reasons, because according to her, he got her husband killed. You guys were right about just layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of plotting and backstory. And there is a lot going on. And I think I'm going, once we get to the halfway point, I'm going to try to make a flow chart. I can't guarantee I'm going to be successful at it. But I think this is one of the reasons I kind of latched on to Jing Ri as a character is because because he's one of the easiest to understand. <laughs> but you know, that's just one black woman's opinion. I've learned to stop trying to predict stuff for the show because I'm always wrong. It does not adhere to a lot of tropes that I am used to. So I am honestly just along for the ride, which is what you guys have suggested. But without further ado, please like if you like this video, please subscribe if you really like this video and would like to see more. If you would like to support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. You get all the full reactions to both Vox Machina and Nirvana and Fire on the Patreon and our Untamed rewatch is going to be posted by the end of the month. Uh, my next read aloud stream was going to be this Friday. However, I don't think I'm going to be reading aloud because I have a lot to do that weekend. I, I want to spare my voice. I think this week we're either going to do some Sims or Stardew Valley. I haven't made up my mind, but it's going to happen. With that being said, thank you for watching. Stay weird, lovelies, and happy eating.